Welcome to Adapting Class. Thank you for deciding to watch this video. How much endocrine do you know and how do you apply it to answer questions? I get asked multiple times about endocrine and I said just one question to test key things, key facts you have to know. So when he asks you a question, it's not going to be straightforward and you can figure out the answer without any problem. So this is the question. This is endocrine type of uh, prioritization, but that is the best way to think about things, what you need to pay attention to related to that diagnosis. So what is the issue? Who need federal intervention? That's all. And this is not aware of the following client. So you have four clients, she's aware. There's no information. Look at individual situation and figure out what's the problem. You have to bring the content and then break down the question and see if this is what you're expecting this particular patient is the content to be able to answer prioritization question at the same time to be able to answer in the endocrine question, you have to master the content, the pathophysiology for that problem. If you master the pathophysiology, you'll be able to figure out what is going on. The client with what? Low T3 and a weight gain of five pounds in 30 days, right? The client with diabetes insipidus and a urine specific gravity of that. Client with what? Elevated 24 hour urine cortisol on NSAID every four hours. Client with what? Hyperadrastrenism and a serum pH of 7.56, this question is designed to test your knowledge about endocrine and things that when you look at a diagnosis, what are the signs and symptoms for that diagnosis? And this will be the same as case form. When they give you a case, it's the same thing. They have to put it in a sentence form. Go back, T3, this is thyroid hormone. You have T3 and T4. Who makes the, that? That's the thyroid. How does the thyroid make it? To stimulation of TSH. What does T3 do and T4? They are metabolic problem. They increase your metabolic activity. If they increase your metabolic activity, you're going to burn fat. If I'm burning fat, I'm going to lose weight. If they produce normal level, your body will be leveled up. If you have high level of T3, you're going to lose weight. If you have a low level, you're going to gain weight. When you have normal level, you're going to be who you are. Therefore, this patient, the nurse just needs to say, it's okay, we'll get you there. We have to increase your T3 so that you can stop losing weight, but it's not a priority. That's what you expect in a low T3 patient to gain weight. So this is gone. Breaking down the question. Diabetes insipidus, urine specific gravity of that. Guess what? Diabetes insipidus, what it means? I have no ADH. If I have no ADH, I cannot absorb water, free water, right? It can, if I cannot absorb free water, my urine is diluted. If my urine is diluted, my concentration, which is specific gravity, is going to be low. What is the normal? 1.003, 1.03. If you low, you're going to be less than this. And this is less than that. It's okay. A client with elevated 24 hour hearing cortisol on NSAID every four hours. Think about it. Elevated urine 24 hour cortisol means if cortisol is elevated in your urine, it's a diagnosis of Cushing pushing disease or syndrome. This is what we use to make the diagnosis. 
what is one of the side effects of pushing is ulceration, gastric ulceration. And you're taking NSAID every four hours, we have a problem. You shouldn't be taking NSAID. So this one, we got to intervene in some form of shape. We got to look at the last one. And the last one, client with hyperaldosteronism and the pH of that. What is the problem? Yes, le high level of aldosterone. High level of aldosterone is the, the diagnosis of Kuhn's disease. When aldosterone, what does he do? He loves sodium and he hates potassium. I'm just using content. Things like when he mentions something, you got to say a few things about it. That means you've learned the thing. If you can say five, three things about the problem, it means you don't understand it. So aldosterone is a Kuhn's disease when it's elevated. Sodium, what does aldosterone do? Retain sodium and water as the water follow and potassium go down. The body does not want to lose its potassium. There's more potassium in the cell than outside. Now you have hypokalemia where your body says, no, I got to push potassium in. So you out of the cell into the um the uh, the surrounding tissue uh, fluid, which is the serum. So the body push potassium in, into the um surrounding uh, fluid, that's the extracellular or serum, and then you will end up having high potassium. But you got to balance it out. The plus. The body starts to push H plus inside the cell. So you lose H plus and you get potassium because aldosterone is getting rid of it. And you don't want to be hypokalemia. So you gain your body push the potassium out of the cell to improve your serum level of sodium, potassium, in order not to be hypokalemic. If you get rid of your acid, your bicarb increase, bicarbonate. So if you're losing acid, you're gaining the base. Therefore, I expect your pH to be this. This is normal. Therefore, this patient, this patient, this patient, no intervention, no intervention, no intervention. Only person we need intervention is the matre. This is the way you answer question. This is the way you break it down. Test taking strategy. You don't have to memorize anything. You bring your content and break down the question. Endocrine. Four topics I'll put over there. If you know them, this is the way you should be thinking about endocrine. We talk about hypothyroid. We talk about a DI. We talk about what? Yeah, Christian. And we talk about cones in one question. So take care of yourself. Subscribe, comment, share the video. Invite more friends to this channel and all the best of luck. Take care. Bye-bye.